everyone to the 2020 Synergy Superstar Awards, brought to you by the Source of Synergy Foundation. Our awards today, as you know, are being presented to two beloved visionaries, Dr. Jean Houston and Dr. Irvin Laszlo. And we were just listening to the Twinkle Twinkle of Starlight by Kristen Hoffman. So we thank, we thank Kristen for the music. I'm Reverend Deborah Moldau. I'm the director of the Evolutionary Leaders Circle of the Source of Synergy Foundation. Jean and Irvin are both members of this community of visionaries, along with many, many others, others who will be giving their tributes today. Uh, I'd like to introduce you now to the visionary behind all of this, the founder and president of the Source of Synergy Foundation, Diane Marie Williams. Thank you so much, Deborah, and many thanks to Becky Suzak for helping bring this program to life. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone across the globe. On behalf of the Source of Synergy Foundation, I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Synergy Superstar Awards, honoring two remarkable beings that are very dear to our hearts, Dr. Jean Houston and Dr. Irving Laszlo. So a big welcome to our Synergy Superstars. Uh, this award is given to extraordinary individuals who source the power of synergy to expand human consciousness, increase our connection with the totality of all, and utilize the vast gifts in service to the great evolutionary awakening, which sets into motion potent forces of creative transformational change. And Jean and Irvin join past awardees, Barbara Marks Hubbard and Don Beck. And when I was just thinking this morning, when one looks through the bios of today's Synergy Superstar awardees, you can't help but think, wow, how does this, does one person accomplish so much? And I think there's a simple answer to that. It's through love. And there's a poem by the poet Khalil Gibran that I know, Greg, you use a lot that states, work is love made visible. And I'd like to quote from this passage. It's called On Work, um, as we embark on honoring our beloved friends. So uh, Gibran writes, but I see to you, but I say to you that when you work, you fulfill a part of Earth's furthest dream, assigned to you when the dream was born. And in keeping yourself with labor, you're in truth, loving life, and to love life through labor is to be intimate with life's in most secret. So thank you, Jean and Irvin, for infusing your work with love, love for all beings and the cosmos at large. And we can't underestimate the importance of having true stewards like you two amazing souls inspiring the way at this critical time in history. And speaking of love, today's Irvin and Carita's 63rd wedding anniversary. May your life together continue to be blessed. Your love is really a, a truly a beautiful example of higher love, commitment, and true partnership. And your love created two fabulous sons, Alexander and Christopher, that are going, um, that are going to be speaking today. And they're both giving so much to our precious world. So happy anniversary and congratulations on your 63 years of love. So I'd like to thank you, to thank you, you, Diane, thank you, Debbie, and thank you, thanks to all of you. Thank you. That's a wonderful surprise. Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of Carita as well. Yes. So now we're going to hear a few words of welcome from the chair of the board of the Source of Synergy Foundation, Barbara Layton. Oh, thank you, Deborah, and thank you, Diane. And what a beautiful day. We all get to be here together at this amazing moment in time. Wow. Wow. Um, I just want to say on behalf of the Source of Synergy Foundation, um, I just want to say what an honor and pr privilege it is for us to be standing here um, side by side with two luminaries who have worked so fully and lovingly, as Diane just said, in guiding our very being into living life in awe and possibility. Um, you have both had an amazing impact in my life, showing us all what it means to thrive in curiosity and recognizing with acute awareness the profound nature of what it also means to conduct, sorry, to conduct one's life 
within the context of synergy and all it brings forth. It's truly miraculous. Um, Dr. Laszlo, you have said, quote, there is a constant and intimate contact among the things that coexist and co-evolve in the universe. A sharing of bonds and messages that makes reality into a stupendous network of interaction and communication. Wow. And Dr. Houston, you have said, these are the times, we are the people, and we are living in the answering years. The Source of Synergy Foundation will just forever be guided by your grace, by your wisdom, by your unyielding vision as we get to co-create co and bring forward this era of transformation and synergy, both as individuals and collectively. And we will do so because it's time. And we will do so because of the courage you have both given us. Um, I just wanna thank you from the deep parts of my heart and soul, both of you for your exquisite work, thank you. This is the time and we are the people. And so we welcome everyone who's joining us online here on Zoom and uh, live across the planet to celebrate our Synergy Superstars. So we will begin today's program with a few short reflections on our extraordinary nominees by some of our highly distinguished evolutionary leaders, all of whom including Jean and Irvin and Diane are featured in the Source of Synergy Foundation's new book, Our Moment of Choice. So let's begin by hearing from Dr. Deepak Chopra. You all know his work well. His newest book, Total Meditation, is his 91st book. Can you believe it? And he's recently launched the new Chopra app. He's a man of the times. So let's hear from Deepak Chopra. I'm Dr. Deepak Chopra. I'm privileged, honored, and humbled to participate in the bestowing of the 2020, 2020 Synergy Superstar Award to Dr. Jean Houston for her exemplary work inspiring us to source our highest human capacities. And also to Dr. Irwin Laszlo, for his exemplary work in supporting us to reconnect to the source. Both of you, Jean Houston and Erwin Laszlo, have been heroes and mentors and guides in my life. I have learned so much from you, and I'm so grateful uh, to both of you for your work and for helping us move in the direction of a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. With deep gratitude and humility, I honor you both. Thank you, Deepak, for those beautiful words. We're so happy to have with us today Greg Braden, five-time New York Times bestselling author, scientist, educator. His latest book is The Wisdom Codes and also Her Moment of Choice. Welcome, Greg Braden. Oh, thank you, Deborah. And I'm just going to say it's so good to see everyone today and so really good to be with everyone today. I'm, I'm honored to be with such uh, esteemed colleagues. Uh, Diane, they say great minds think alike. You took my Khalil Gibran quote. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna go to my, my plan B. I, um, I am honored to be here today, Jean and, and Irvin. Uh, Diane asked me to speak for two minutes uh, and to encapsulate the lifetimes of work that you have brought to this world in, in two minutes. Uh, you know, we could spend hours uh, talking about what it is that you've done and, and why you've done it. But uh, I was thinking about you when I was in the shower this morning. That's when the great, the great inspirations seem to occur. And what became very clear to me is that through your lives, you have embodied a fundamental principle in nature that is based in resilience and what is called spare capacity. Uh, nature never waits until something is needed to find that something. 
uh, there is a, a principle where nature looks ahead. And in your lifetimes, when it was not always in vogue to do so, you had the vision and the dedication and the courage and the determination and the perseverance to think and to see the world in new ways that were maybe not so popular at the time, but you knew that we would need them at some point in our lives. And that point is now in the beauty of the spare capacity that you have brought to our consciousness, the beauty of the spare capacity that you've brought to our ways of, of knowing and thinking is that when the old ways are breaking down, we have something already available to us through your lifetimes of work. You've given us the spare capacity in our consciousness to think differently and to live differently in ways that are healthy and that will allow us not just to survive, but to thrive and transcend what it is that the world has brought to our doorsteps. So I want to say to you, just from the bottom of my heart, uh, thank you for your lifetimes of work and the work that is continuing. I know you're not finished yet. And on a personal note, I just want you to know, because I've never had the opportunity to say this to you, I was working in the defense industry during the Cold War years when I first became of each of your work uh, at the same time. And I think that's no accident. And through your work, you helped me to see that there is another way and there is a better way. And through the discoveries and the wisdom that you had the courage to share back in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, you have personally inspired me to follow my heart, follow the path. Uh, and I'm just so grateful to know you on this level and also to call you my friends. So thank you. I love you both. And uh, congratulations on this much deserved award that you both have today. Beautiful, Greg. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to introduce Lynn McTaggart, uh, an award-winning journalist and uh, the author of seven books, including The Power of Eight. Lynn. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. It's so great to be here with all of you evolutionary leaders and all of the people who are watching this. I mean, what to say about Jean Houston and Irvin Laszlo. I mean, Jean invented the personal development movement and Irvin Laszlo invented the whole concept of a new paradigm of wholeness and was an early adopter of the notion of a quantum energy field that was essentially a mothership of, of information. I mean, both of them were seminal influences on my life. And I mean, these two visionaries, and that's really what we have to call them, are, you know, are visionaries to anyone who hopes to be an evolutionary leader or a cultural creative or some, anybody who wants to change the world. And they are also personal mentors of mine. I mean, Margaret Mead considered Jean her adopted daughter. I've considered her my adopted older sister. And the same thing with Irvin Laszlo. Um, I, first of all, when other people see disaster as we're going through at the moment, they see possibility. They see new paradigm. It was Irvin who talked about this whole moment as being a moment of possibility, a bifurcation, giving us a choice. Which way are we going to go? And the same thing with Jean. Jean also says, this is the time, we are the people. And that's what I love so much about both of them. Essentially, they are, you know, they've been spiritual mentors to me, but they're also kind of nudges. And that's what I particularly love. I, I love the idea that both of them have nudged me onto greater things. I mean, Jean, continues to nudge me to do more. Um, Irvin continues to nudge me to reach for greater academic um, success. Um, I love their idea about inspiring people to 
to reach their full potential. I mean, they embody that famous quote by Robert Browning, that a man, or in this case, a woman's reach should exceed his grasp, his grasp or what's a heaven for? So I, I see that in them. And I also see that wonderful quote that Fitzgerald had in The Great Gatsby, uh, talking about Gatsby and saying it was one of those rare smiles with a quality of eternal reassurance in it that you may come across four or five, five times in your life. It understood you just as far as you wanted to be understood. It believed in you as you would like to believe in yourself and assured you that it had precisely the impression of you that at your best you hope to convey. Thanks to both of you, I'm just one of thousands of your students who will continue, because of you, to reach for the stars. Thank you so much. It's been my honor, my true honor, to know you both. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so you can hear me. I got the, so. We um, can't see you though. There you are. Hooray. Okay. Hooray. <laughs> can you see me? Can you hear me? We can yes. hear you. <laughs> well, maybe I didn't off. start my talk while I still can. <laughs> I'm sitting downstairs in the basement. So let's again. So we no, we're going to make we're going to make you listen to a little more love first. <laughs> oh dear. Listen, speech first, love afterwards. Because I'm on now. Let's not play any more games. Okay. <laughs> You're leading the evolution, Jean. You go. <laughs> but you can see me. That's good. Yeah. Well, quite frankly, friends, I, I was so surprised that I was given the honor of this. Synergy Award, I mean, and also it, it, along with the luminous, glorious mind of Dr. Laszlo, I, who do not even know what I will be when I grow up, you know, but I do know a few things. What I do know is to say, dear friends, elect yourself, elect yourself. Be not afraid. You were made for these times regardless of what happens to the technology. It shows that we really have to develop our own inner technology since the outer one doesn't work too well. Anyway, I'd like to speak some words that are not just from me, but together with an extraordinary woman, Dr. Anna Louise Smitsman, who I have never met in person, never met, because we live on opposite sides of the planet, me in Ashland, Oregon, she on the island of Mauritius but with whom since March on Zoom, we have been writing a book about the emerging and future human. Again, what we say is elect yourself, raise up, raise up from the, the graves of all those thousands of years of suffering, slavery, violence, rise up. Because my dear friends, you see, the reset button of history has been hit. And it, there is a requirement for all of us. And the requirement is that we become the required human for this time. The time of a new story. The time of where we stand united in the great circle of life. The count is on us. Remember who you are and why we we're here. Be not afraid, dear friends, you were made for these times. Shake off those blankets of forgetfulness. Hmm? You know your truth. You know who you are. Ignite your passion with the flame of love that was kept alive by Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, Jane Goodall, Margaret Mead, and of course the Source of Synergy Foundation. All of those of you listening here, all those of you who are fighting for our liberation and the healing of our world. This, dear friends, is the same flame that lives inside your heart. And with this heart, with this flame, ignite now your, your moral passion for doing what is right. Not what is easy, not what is expected. Love liberates. Life liberates. 
Creativity liberates. Compassion liberates. You liberate. Ignite the healing of our world. Divest from the currencies of greed and separation. Unplug the fuel of hatred and violence and invest in our future with the currencies of justice, truth, and compassion. Care comes first, not money. In this world, oh dear friends, there is no place for the old story of prey and predator. No, 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 no. Winners and losers. No, no. We are the future humans. You are the future humans. Don't blame me. You were born for these times. You are the architects of a world that works for us all. A world of plenty, of beauty, of caring. The great world that we call home. Together, we can change our story in the, the favor of life. This is your moment of choice. You hold the power. You make the difference. And with this life-given power, elect yourself now for this new world and this new story. This is the new hero and heroine's journey where women and men and children a few dogs and cats and the, and the earth walk together hands in hand with the very cosmos and the circle of life. Take your place now as this world comes alive in you. As the future humans of a whole new time that are latent in you, ready to emerge. I believe, dear friends, that we are now in a renaissance of renaissances. Remember that the great European renaissance of the 15th century was preceded by a terrible time of troubles. Terrible. A vast plague, the bubonic plague, enormous divisions between people, the breakdown of all the social norms, over half of Europe dying from the plague. And then out of it, emerged the time of radical renewal, huh. rinascita in Italian, rinascita, rebirth, renaissance. <laughs> and with it, extraordinary changes in perspective, the way we see the understanding of the depth, not only of painting, but of ourselves, in new art, science, music, everything, tutte, tutte, everything. When it was discovered then truly, that the human heart can go to the lengths of God. Oh, friends, 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 we are in a similar situation, a similar time, vast global pandemic, enormous divisions between people, systemic breakdown everywhere, incredible greed, but also breakthroughs in science, in spirit, and I believe in art, certainly in consciousness. The new science that tells us that we don't just live in the universe, the universe lives in us. Something that the great mystics and high creative folk have always known. The universe lives in us. <sighs> us. Us. Me. You. In our biodegradable space-time suits. The universe lives in us. But we need something more to help us through this. And this is where Anna Louise and I have been working so hard. We need a new kind of compass. A moral compass to activate the consciousness and the capacities to help us become the wisdom that we truly are, that you really are. For a moment, just imagine, look inside. Imagination is critical. You look inside and discover that there is such a moral compass with coordinates, yes, of north, south, east, west. And each of the directions, each of the directions represents an essential quality of our true wisdom, nature. The center point, look at the center point. The center point of the compass helps us realize the all-pervading wisdom of consciousness which reveals for us the presence of our true eternal nature. 
the wisdom also helps us to realize the source of our existence and our direct access to cosmic consciousness. I've been working for too many years helping people tap into the depths from which we come and we find that from there comes invention, creativity, loving, transformative ways of knowing, seeing, doing, being. And it helps us recognize this is the source of our existence. We have direct access to cosmic consciousness. We're not, we're not encapsulated bags of skin dragging around a dreary little ego. No. We are organism, environment. We are the luminosity of being the light the Lamori che muove il sole e l'altra stelle, the light that moves the sun and all the stars, that moves us as well. We have to change perspective. Now look further at the compass. The east, the direction of the east helps us realize the mirror-like wisdom which reveals the true nature of change and the dance between the absolute and the relative aspects of being so that we don't get lost in the world of just form and appearances. There is so much more. Not a bad meditation. You close your eyes and you enter into the depth of imagination and at the same time you know there is so much more and you begin to live in that. Let's go to the south. The south direction helps us realize the wisdom of equanimity which reveals how our fundamental nature is the same and how thus, dear friends, we are of equal value. And this wisdom also helps us to realize our interdependence, our interdependence and how to develop our wisdom capacities for, well, for living in right relationship, right relationships as stewards of the earth as well as for all others, for our collective well-being. The West. <laughs> the West directions helps us to realize the wisdom of discernment, the wisdom of discernment, which reveals the causes of suffering and also the paths of liberation. And this wisdom also helps us to access our sacred will. We got our will, but we also got our sacred will. And it purifies our desires by, by realizing the true nature of the flame of love that burns eternally within us. The North, the direction of the North helps us to realize the all accomplishing wisdom which reveals the path of full self-actualization. It exists in us, it's exists in each one, the actualization, it is there. It is there as that paradigm which is beating on our brain pan and says, you are more, you are more than you pretend to be, you are more than what most eyes can see, you are more than all your history, arise, become awake with every breath you take. The God within will wake to be. You are more. Oh my, dear friends, it is also a wisdom which helps us develop the perseverance and the right actions for fulfilling our purpose and role in this extraordinary time, in this great play, this great theater of consciousness. The moral compass of wisdom also holds the coordinates, the coordinates for our core values of our, our essential nature, reminding us how to bring forth our personal and our collective wisdom. <laughs> These wisdom potentials join us with, together as cosmic co-creators, living in interdependent co-arising with the universe. Interdependent co-arising, which the great ancients knew about so brilliantly. A moral confidence, it's, it's also a moral compass for navigating the higher order choices and intentions that are required for building a work world that works, that is true, just, fair, and above all, caring, reminding us of the intrinsic value and dignity of all life. 
And while we become aware of all these wisdom qualities and powers, we can feel how this compass is also part of our own inner architecture, part of the constitution of our own psyches. How deep, how deep is the well of the psyche? Shall we not call it endless? And I then see how this same compass lives in all of us. It's also known as the wheel of life or the medicine wheel in many of the indigenous wisdom traditions. So dear, dear friends, remember, we are all superstars at this time. We are all superstars. We are all cosmic agents and not just the latest products of the metabolism of the galaxy. So dear friends, be not afraid. We are made for these times. Thank you. I'd like to invite everybody to unmute yourself for a moment to show Jean some appreciation. Yay! Oh, my Yay. Woo. Woo. Thank you, Jean. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Bravo, Jean. That was lovely. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Jean. Yeah. Jean. Amazing. Oh. Jean, as ever. Oh. Beautiful. Thank you, Jean. It was outstanding. Thank you, Jean. Yeah. Oh. So it is clear why the Source of Synergy Foundation is awarding the Synergy Superstar Award to oh. Jean Houston oh. in this, in this amazing, uh, strange, and wondrous year of 2020. Yeah. Uh, we are truly made for these times, all of us, Jean, and you remind us in, in, in ways that open our hearts and our spirits. So thank you, thank you for, uh, thank you. for being with us today to accept your award. Now, for a bit of perspective on Jean's life, we have a special treat for you that was produced with uh, some help from Connie Buffalo and music by Shyla Ray. Recognizing oneness, no separation of you and I of that of this. We are playing one game, everyone who wins the same. I allow all things to exist today. I allow all things to exist in the
introduce uh, Connie Buffalo. Connie was born into the Chippewa Nation and she's partnered with Jean to form the Renaissance Project International. They've been working together in divine synergy for many years. Connie Buffalo. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, that was a beautiful presentation. So thank you for putting that together. It's always good to see where we've been as well as where we're going. Um, my trip, I, I've got my jacket on because I'm somewhere in North Dakota. I think I'm in Fargo now. I'm heading from um, Oregon over to um, my reservation over in Wisconsin. <laughs> Bad time of the year to do it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm on the way. And as I was going, it occurred to me that the journey that I'm taking is very much indicative of Jean Houston and what she does for all of us in that in that, that there's the call and that call to get out of the, the little room and go into uh, realms of consciousness that that we may never have even known existed so as i moved out of out of oregon and into into the beauty of of so much of our glorious country it reminded me of moving out of my smallness into a larger perspective of what was possible and what there was to be and that's like what jean does is like as i was traveling the the snow-capped mountain forests of montana i remembered how she can take us to the to the heights of possibilities and and show us the glory and stand on that mountaintop seeing all that's possible not only for our lives but as we join our lives into that not as a singular tree but in, as the forest of trees on the top of those snow crested mountains and then as we <laughs> then as you go down out of that beauty and uh, across wyoming and and down into the flatlands of north dakota it's into all of the challenges that she has prepared us so well for with all of the archetypes and the and the allies that she she inspires around us by virtue of our friends 
sorry, I better close this really fast. That was my two minute warning. <laughs> By virtue of our friends and, and allies and then into Minnesota, where after we've gone through the trials and all that is so disruptive um, to all that we know is true, into seeing the, the land of a thousand lakes where we see our own reflections of all the very many aspects of ourselves. And that's what Jean always talks about. So my friends, I, it is with great pleasure that I introduce my friend, my, um, my inspiration, my, my, always my mentor, and the one that I consider the, the great champion of our human spirits, Jean Houston. Thank you, dear Connie. I think it's time to give Jean the award. What do you think? <laughs> so the let us hear from okay. Diane Williams of the Source of Synergy yes. Foundation. Thank you. thank you, Deborah, and thank you, Connie, for all that you contributed to making this lovely ceremony possible. So dear Jean, like the song says, you are so powerful. And thank you for inspiring all of us to know thyself by seeing in ourselves and others the possible. And we so honor you for your pivotal role in activating the evolutionary genius of countless souls around the planet, for helping us know our innate human potential, and that we, the world, every person on this planet, are the ones that we've been waiting for. That we are sourced in spirit, that we are coded with the cosmos, and that we are all gifted with possibilities and capacity is so huge that we are, as you say, evocators of the possible and can and will jump to a new order of being together that will usher in a renaissance of beauty and possibility. So dearest Jean, the Source of Synergy Foundation is so honored to bestow upon you Dr. Jean Houston, the 2020 Synergy Superstar Award for your exemplary work in inspiring us to source our highest human capacities give this to you through the screen <laughs> yeah. I wish I can hand it to you in person <laughs> but I know yours arrived so you got it <laughs> well we wish we could all be in person for this glorious occasion but isn't it wonderful that we can be together here on zoom and on Facebook and share this wonderful moment with so many people in different parts of the world so we are now going to hear some tributes to Jean from some wonderful, even amazing people. Uh, we've asked them to be very brief because so many people want to share their love with Eugene and with Irvin. So uh, we're going to start today with uh, Dwayne Elgin, author, educator, and citizen voice activist, whose uh, latest book, Choosing Earth, has spawned the Choosing Earth Project. Dwayne Elgin. Uh. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'll keep it brief, but I, I want to begin 45 years ago. Jean, you're one of my oldest friends. Uh, we met at a gathering where you were offering reflections on a book co-authored by myself, Joseph Campbell, and some other luminaries. Uh, Jonas Salk was another reflector, and you held forth, Jean, as a young woman then and you just blew away everyone with your enthusiasm, with your uh, the same voice, the same fervor that you showed up with here today. And so I was thinking, what is a superstar? Well, you were a superstar way back then. And a superstar is a guiding light. And you were a guiding light back 45 years ago. You inspired me. You still inspire me today. Uh, and as a guiding light, you're bringing direction, a sense of orientation, a sense of possibility. It isn't telling people what to do, it's inviting people into their own greatness. And your work is not only uh, uh, revealing your own awakening, you invite again and again the awakening of all of us. Over the years, you have not only been a source of inspiration, you've been a source of generosity in life. You have such a big heart with so much kindness. I could speak to the kindness and generosity that I have seen you quietly bring to the world, unknown to many people. And for example, 
recently there were fires that raged through uh, Northern California, through uh, or surrounding communities of Ashland. And you opened your home to a, an entire family to come in and be in your home uh, in this time of profound transition. So you not only speak these uh, words of inspiration, your life is the inspiration. So uh, with that, Jean, bless you, dear sister. I love you deeply as one of my oldest, dearest friends. Uh, thank you so much for what you've given to the world and you've given to me. Oh. Thank you, thank you so much, dear Duane. Uh, now, we interrupt this program for a special bulletin. We have a surprise. It's a surprise for Jean and it's a surprise for us. So uh, I give the floor to Barbara Layton, Chair of the Source of Synergy Foundation. Mm, thank you, Deborah. Jean, I hope you don't mind, but I was uh, compelled to uh, reach out to Hillary Clinton yesterday, um, letting her know that you were receiving this award. And I just now got the email, uh, which I would just love to share with you. It's very brief. Um, and it says the following. Jean Houston is a visionary and scholar who uses her deep intelligence to help guide people to realize their greater potential. She's also a great company and a warm and caring person who deserves this well-earned recognition. Stay safe. <laughs> Surprised, but thank you. <laughs> thank you, Hillary. <laughs> Everybody loves you, Jean. <laughs> So let's hear some more love. We're going to hear next from Dr. Jude Curvin, planetary healer, futurist, author of The Cosmic Hologram, and author, also co-author of Cosmos, a co-creator's guide to the whole world with Irvin Laszlo. Jude Curvin. Thank you, everyone. Jean, Irvin, my goodness, you are true superstars. I think you're more than superstars. You're like a galaxy of stars, each of you. So it gets bigger, I think, as we go along. <laughs> Dear Jean, and we first met at our evolutionary leaders gathering at your hometown in Ashland back in 2014. Your incredible brilliance and wisdom is rightly honored around the world. But what struck me then and ever since is your wonderfully caring, kind and joyous presence. Perhaps your Sicilian genes have something to do with this, but whatever it is, you're amazing, just you. Um, I'm wholeheartedly grateful that you're my friend and a marvelous soul model, not role model, you're a soul model. You're a maestro of spiritual and social artistry, an inspirational co-creative <laughs> companion for all evolutionary leaders and pioneers, which means everyone. And dear Irvin, thank and bless you for your indefatigable exploration and deep and pioneering insights into the nature of reality itself. Tony and I have got lovely and warm-heartedly marvellous memories of being with you and Carita and congratulations on your anniversary. And it's been my great honour and delight to work alongside you and contribute to some of the many evolutionary initiatives for transformation of change that you've inspired and empowered. I love you both so much and I'm so delighted that we're all companions on this great journey of homecoming together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jude Curvin. So we have some more evolutionary leaders lined up here to speak with you. And next we have Olivia Hansen, who is founder and president of the Synthesis Foundation and the Spiritual Life TV channel. Oh, much love and congratulations to Eugene, our treasured friend. And I think we all agree, our lady of possibility thinking. You always encourage us to think bigger possibilities of who we are, what we can do, and how we can work together to change the world. You know, you want to help everyone, but I think uh, you want to also really put an emphasis on women, women to bring forward their leadership ability, 
with the divine feminine of caring and compassion and cooperation and collaboration. And one of my most favorite memories uh, with you was when we were in Oxford, England at the Manor House with Outstanding Women. And we were working on a uh, planned public launch of Rising Women, Rising World. And then we met at your house in Ashland to put the final touches on the plan. And then we took Rising Women, Rising World to the United Nations to share this impulse with young people at the Nexus Conference, where some of us were on the panel, but you gave the keynote speech, inspiring these young people to realize their possibilities. And young people are a draw for you for sure, and, and women. Jean, with you, there's always great stories, good food, and a lot of laughter. And then, often this offer comes, what can I do for you? How can I help? And you mean it. You believe so much in service to others, and you set the most beautiful example by your own livingness. I think this is a tribute we're hearing from everyone today that goes to the heart. So all of us are blessed to know you and love you. Indeed, it's so true, Olivia, thank you. And next we, and thank you to all of you for being so brief. We, <laughs> we love you all and, and, uh, and we have so many wonderful tributes planned. So next we're going to hear from Bishop Heather Shea, who is the spiritual director and chief executive offer at the incredible United Palace in New York with which Jean is affiliated. Thank you. And it is indeed an honor to be here with all of you. And congratulations to both superstars. How extraordinary in winning this award today. And Jean, thank you because you have inspired me in so many levels. So thank you for me, my family, all of us at the United Palace of Spiritual Arts. And, and Jean, like many of us, has, has helped us really align with the archetypes. And when I think of Jean, she has the wisdom of an Athena and the follow through. And that magic as we heard, and that flow of words of Saraswati, including humor. And as Ben has said already, the compassion and love of Kuan Yin. Thank you, Jean, for changing my life each and every day. And congratulations, much love. Thank you, Heather. Next, I'd like to introduce Linnea Lombard. She is the board chair of New Stories. She's a transformational psychologist, an interfaith minister, a wilderness guide, a community weaver, a social artist, and strategic philanthropist, Linnea Lumber. Oh, so much has already been said. Um, picking up on what Duane said, uh, you actually had me in the 70s uh, when I picked up the book Mind Games and the opening sequence was the dream that I had recurrently in my childhood. Uh, and I couldn't believe it. How did you know? How could you know my dream that I had in Auburn, Maine? Um, but it was the jolt into, um, my first jolt into the world of collective unconscious and the stories that are beyond personal. Our lives have inter intertwined a number of times. First, I first met you at, at Silomar with Brew Joy and David Spangler. Years and years ago, then on the decks of Hollyhock, and i um, incredibly grateful for your help in the new Mythos grant that I put together at Pacifica, and you came and helped choose the recipients of the grant. Um, so many people have talked about all the different places you've shown up, whether it's at uh, the United Palace or Centers for uh, Spiritual Living or your mystery school that uh, at IONS, which I was at some of the time. Uh, you make the mythic realms of the gods and goddesses come alive in a way that serves all of us in our life journey. 
What I have most appreciated about you, June, um, Jean, in, in addition to your incredible humor all the time, is that at one moment you can be larger than life, and the next moment you're a humble participant in um, a collective process. And I think that's an incredible um, gift in a world leader. And I see you as a world leader, particularly in the healing of the anima mundi, our world soul. Thank you for all of that you do. Oh, Beautiful, Linnea, thank you. And now we have Claire Zamet, who is a transformational teacher, a leader, a mentor, and a successful conscious entrepreneur. Thank you for joining us, Claire. Thank you so much. So honored to share a few words, Jean. I was so moved by your talk today. And I think what's, what's extraordinary is that, you know, and this is just, for, I think, for all of us to, to bring awareness to, is how far into the future your vision stretches. So it's not just that you are a visionary when uh, you began your work. You continue to push the edge of human possibility and show the way to that even today, even in the midst of what we're experiencing. And so, so to that, what I want to say is applying Occam's razor, the theory that states the simplest expl explanation is likely to be the one that's true, I think it's much more likely that Gene was sent to us from a thousand years in the future to model the embodiment of the greatness of human possibility, much more than she was born in, in New York City in the 30s as an evolutionary mutation. <laughs> because I think what's so extraordinary about you, Jean, it's not just what you say, say or what you do or, or the legacy of your great work in the world. It's, it's who you are that embodies the potential of human greatness in three very distinct ways. The greatness of what it is to activate the higher potential of our mind, to know in multiple ways across time and space. The greatness of your heart and your generosity. There is no one that I've met in this world who is more generous with your attention, with your time, with your resources. This is the greatness of our human potential in our generosity. And the greatness at which you bring grit and determination and the means to make these possibilities manifest. And I know that to honor you, is for all of us to step even more powerfully into the greatness that you show us is possible for who we are. And I think of all your superpowers, the one that I most appreciate is how you ignite greatness in other people. When I met you, you reflected back a larger vision for me than I could even see or imagine that called me to rise even higher. And what is even more extraordinary, in everyone I've spoken to who knows you, I see that this is a common story. So the power of a leader is not determined by their followers. It's determined by the number of leaders that they ignite in the world. And your legacy is a legacy of having ignited so many leaders. The ripples of your life energy will flow for generations and generations to come. I love you so much, and I so am grateful to celebrate your extraordinary life and work with this award. Thank you so much, Claire. Uh, we have some neighbors of Jean's here with us today, Gary Zukov and Linda Francis. Uh, Gary, would you like to say a few words? Yes. Are you on mute? I'm uh, humbled by... Um, you, Jean, as I usually am, and uh, by you, Irvin, and I'm so grateful for you because, uh, um, not only because I first read about you in systems theory so many decades ago, Irvin, and you, Jean, about the mystery school and all the things that you have done with your beautiful partner, um, but because also, I guess I'm stumbling for words because I'm so grateful for you both. It's uh, Irvin, I remember the time when uh, uh, Linda and I visited you and Carita in Tuscany in your beautiful villa with a, a cathedral-like bedroom that we slept in. It sounds grand, but it was actually, we were worried that the ceiling might fall down because it was made of bricks and it was an arch. And you were both so gracious to us. And Jean, 
now we're neighbors. I'm humbled by the fact that we live so close and I have to be on Zoom and, and see the greatness of you again on a screen. Um, thank you both for being in the world. I'm, I'm just so grateful to be a part of your lives in however small a way. Um, beloved, do you have anything to share? Oh, I, I mean, I'm just so honored to be here with, with both of you and all of you. And just so grateful for the fact that we're all here together for the same purpose. I, I, I feel it so clearly. And um, Irvin and Clarita, I'm so happy to be able to um, have this be on your wedding anniversary. How beautiful, 63 years, that's just amazing. I'm just, uh, and, and I know your work is so powerful in the world and so, so grateful for all that you've done. Um, on this uh, planet while you're while you're here. It's so beautiful. And Jean, always, um, it's such a pleasure uh, to hear you, to be with you, and, and to get to hear you again today and hear what people have said about you because they are saying what their experience and mine has always been um, really, um, you've always moved me and um, I love you very much, both of you. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be here with all of you. And by the way, I want to clarify something so you don't think that Irvin and Clarita's bedrooms are falling in. <laughs> <It was the, laughs> the, 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 the villa that I remember visiting you in, uh, you told us, I think at the time was 400 years old, and there was a crack in the ceiling where four arches, where two arches came to a conclusion at a ceiling directly above our bed, and there was a crack, in, and the ceiling was all bricks. And I asked you about that, and you said you'd had engineers look at it, and they said, yeah, uh, if, uh, if you want to keep it, you should have that fixed in the next hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, just some of the many experiences that I, I treasure with all of you, and plus just being alive at the same time as you in the art school. And thank you, Deborah and Diane, for, for putting all this together and for all the beautiful faces I see here. And such an honor to be here in this honoring of, of both you, Irvin, and Eugene, uh, for this. Um, it just it's so clear how much you um, embody what this award is all about. So thank you. Thank you so much, Gary and Linda. And uh, I want to thank all of the evolutionary leaders who have joined us in the Zoom room here, uh, and. Uh, Particularly, I wanted to mention uh, two, two things that were said in the chat room just now. So we heard from Anadea Judith that a red-tailed hawk just flew to her window to congratulate Gina and Irvin. And then Sherry Mitchell said that she has an eagle cir circling overhead where she is in Maine. So coast to coast and around the world, uh, we are congratulating our Synergy superstars today. And we have uh, one more wonderful evolutionary leader in our um, lineup of tributes specifically to Jean, and that is Dr. Anna Lewis Smitsman, who is the founder and CEO of EarthWise Center, a visionary scientist, an author, a futurist, a systems architect, and um, a leadership catalyst for the transition to a thrivability civilization. And Anna Lewis is working with Jean on a new book. Thank you so much. And it's such a great honor to be with you all here today and to really, you know, honor um, Dr. Jean Houston, Dr. Irvin Laszlo, my deepest, deepest congratulations to both of you for this amazing and well-deserved award as our global superstars. I really want to thank you both so much for all you've given us to become our greater cosmic selves. And I consider you both my really dear friends and great teachers and inspirations. Jean, as my special tribute to you, um, you know, it's been such an incredible journey to be with you every day <laughs> as we are working on our book. I'm so grateful you're part of my life and you inspire me so much. I love you so deeply and I learn so much from you every day. And, you know, you're well known around the world as one of the principal founders of the human potential movement and one of the foremost visionary thinkers and doers of our time. Bucky Fuller, you know, he rightly said that your mind is a national treasure and I trust you all agree that you are really a global treasure as well for the whole world. You told me once how you always keep an empty space inside of you 
And that is so that you can have radical empathy for the other. That really touched me very deeply. And it also really shows that, you know, how much you love each and every one of us, how you show up every day, as Claire said so beautifully as well. And then you told me something recently. You said, hmm, Angelus, we just don't have time anymore to become the possible human. I've written about this for decades. Things have changed now. <laughs> with your great determination. We have to become the requirement humans for this time. We have to become the future humans now. And here's something remarkable what I've experienced from you in these last nine months as we've been together daily. And that is also your own evolutionary process, your own deep rebirth process. You truly are a future pioneer of our greatest transformation. And indeed, it really feels like many others have said here today as well, that you are speaking to us now from this future place already, that for many of us is only just a little glimpse of the greater realities. But for you, it's home. And you've also shown us in so many ways that how myths are always alive, always in a state of becoming, always in a state of emergence, as is the same for all of us and through your own mythic life. You're inspiring us to become the new story, the new mythos for this transitional time, for a whole new era. You are truly timeless and you have a very funny way of saying that and that's by saying I've been around since God had baby teeth <laughs> and you're <laughs> urging us every day to stay, step into those greater possibilities. You have also a natural gift for asking the most incredible questions that wake us up, that call us to look beyond the obvious. And you have this amazing way of bending time itself to explore the horizons of our quantum realities and access our cosmic potentials. You are known as one of the best mythic storytellers. I know you also as a story seeder, igniting us those mythic codes that are dormant in our hearts. And I'm glad you do it that way because then we don't have to kiss every frog because even that narrative you've managed to change as these days you never know what awakens when you kiss a frog thank you for empowering the millions of women around the world including me you really are our most beloved evocator a midwife of souls ah, so much so that indeed at times we don't know are we talking to you or the goddess athena as the master chef of our lure of becoming thank you jean for all you've given us we love you Enjoy the Superstar Award for all three presents and continue to shine bright as the amazing star that you are, made from the cosmic light that illuminates our world forever. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Annalise, and all of you future humans living right now for your heartfelt tributes to Jean Houston. Thank you, thank you. And now, before we move on to the life of Irvin Laszlo, we have a message from Dr. Bruce Lipton to both Jean and Irvin. Bruce, as you know, is an internationally recognized leader in bridging science and spirit. He's a stem cell biologist and best-selling author of The Biology of Belief. Hi, dear friends and cultural creators. Bruce Lipton here. I am delighted that the Source of Synergy Foundation has asked me to be here with you today as we honor two of the brightest stars guiding the evolution of human civilization, Gene Houston and Irvin Laszlo. To understand the role of these two outstanding humanitarians, I would like to offer the story of metamorphosis, wherein a caterpillar transforms itself into a butterfly. A caterpillar, like a human or any other animal, represents a coherent community of sentient cells, each cell resembling a miniature person. The billions of cells that comprise the caterpillar provide for its structure and its life functions. The caterpillar is one of the most voracious of all organisms. When seated on a plant, a caterpillar will devour all the leaves until there is no more food available. At this point, the caterpillar stops its destructive behavior and encases itself in a cocoon. In this cocoon, the shutdown functions of the caterpillar leaves the cellular community out of work. With no work and no jobs, the structure of the community starts to fall apart. Chaos ensues. However, within this chaos of dissociated cells are specialized cells called imaginal cells who offer a different vision of society and guides that cellular community to regroup into a higher level of organization, creating a butterfly 
and an organism that has the lightest touch on the environment. Human civilization is like that voracious caterpillar. We have destroyed and undermined the web of life and precipitated our own extinction. To survive, civilization must transform. It must undergo a metamorphosis, but how? To answer that, our community has been blessed with two profoundly important human imaginal cells, visionaries Jane Houston and Irvin Laszlo. These two humanitarians have provided civilization with empowering knowledge and guidance to manifest a healthy, happy, and sustainable world. So it is with deepest gratitude and appreciation on behalf of civilization that we thank you, dearest Jean and Irvin. Congratulations, love to you. And we thank you, Bruce Lipton. So it's time for us to hear about Dr. Irvin Laszlo, our other amazing Synergy Superstar Awardee today. So we've asked Emmanuel Kunzelman and his lovely wife, Laura Rose, to uh, introduce this segment of the program. Emmanuel Kunzelman is a social entrepreneur and environmentalist. He's founder of the nonprofit Green Heart International and a co-creator of the Global Purpose Movement. And he serves on the International Advisory Council of the Laszlo Institute for New Paradigm Research. Laura, uh, Laura Rose is CEO of Greenheart International, promoting global cultural exchange. And together they organized a 2016 tribute to Dr. Laszlo in Chicago called Pioneer of the New Paradigm, a wonderful title for our awardee today. Emmanuel Kunzelman and Laura Rose. Hello, Irvin and Karita. Happy anniversary to the two of you. Everyone is celebrating your brilliance and your contribution to consciousness and evolution. And I want to also celebrate your deep humanity, your kindness, and your welcoming us into your family. Meeting you and Carita several years ago was one of the most heartwarming and beautiful experiences of our lives. We had dreamed about it for so long and we were welcomed with open arms and met your children, your grandchildren, and felt a part of you and your family. Congratulations to you both and for what you bring into the world. We love you so much. Thank you, Laura. It's an honor to be here today to honor Jean Houston and Irvin Laszlo and to introduce Irvin. And what can you say in a minute or two about the man whose genius has transformed society over a half a century, taking us from the old Newtonian world into the quantum world, who took us on an evolutionary journey for this last half century, showing us the system's view of the world, the grand synthesis of evolution, having the boldness and courage to propose the Akashic field and how that works with science. And something close to my heart, showing us that it's a purposeful universe and an intelligent cosmos. And then he's moved on to macro shift and how you can change the world. And now taking us full circle to the immortal mind, to reconnecting to the source to the global shift now and the wisdom principles. Irvin Laszlo has provided an artistic form. He's a great concert pianist, a cultural form, a systems form, a philosophical underpinning of the greatest transition of all times. And what's more, he's a dear man that I'm so honored to know and call my friend. And Irvin, of all your great genius, we ask you now to spread your genius to one more category, to make the foundation of your legacy within the Laszlo Institute of New Paradigm Research a loving testimony to your contributions to humanity. It's an honor to know you, to call you a friend, and to be here today and introduce Irvin Laszlo 
to the most deserving award, Superstar Award. Thank you very much, Sharma. Thank you so much, Emmanuel and Laura. And now let's go to the movies where we're going to find out some things about Dr. Irvin Laszlo that I'll bet a lot of you don't know. もし私たちが普段何気なく行っている営みの全てが何一つ消え去ることなく宇宙の虚空の出雲かに記憶され時空を超えて未来の世代に伝えられていくとするなら私たちは今自分が選んでいるこの道をこれからもそのまま歩み
as a director at the UN Institute for Training and Research. In 1993, Dr. Laszlo founded the Club of Budapest, made up of leading intellectuals from around the world. The club has more than 50 honorary members, artists, scientists, and religious leaders, including seven recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize. So we have we have uh, here going from below is Sir Arthur Clarke, who wrote the 2002 Space Odyssey. And uh, he is, uh, of course, supporting and he has written a preface also to our report. During his tenure at the United uh, Nations, Dr. Laszlo resolved to establish this club. Meeting with politicians and ambassadors, he came to feel deeply that to overcome the crises we are now facing, the spirits of individuals must be enlightened. He called upon artists, scientists, and religious leaders with their rich sensitivity and powers of persuasion. We have several former presidents, like uh, Gorbachev, like Václav Havel. Of course, everybody knows the Dalai Lama. I, together with him, we have written the Manifesto on Planetary Consciousness. So I'm afraid we had to stop the video early because there are technical problems with the sound in the rest of the video. But you can see what an extraordinary background our beloved Professor Laszlo has, along with the the amazing work that he continues to do. And so to present the 2020 Synergy Superstar Award to Irvin Laszlo, I give you Diane Williams. Thank you, Deborah. And yes, what an extraordinary video and an extraordinary life. And thank you so much, Emmanuel and Laura Rose for that beautiful introduction of our beloved Irvin. So dearest Irvin, thank you for so generously sharing with all of us the overwhelming evidence for the continuity of consciousness and that we are part of an interconnected Akashic field that holds the constant and enduring memory of an intelligent cosmos. We wish to express our gratitude to you for showing us that by reconnecting to the source, we can change ourselves and transform our world in the process. Your work continues to give us the confidence to step more fully into who we truly are. And in today's world where there's so much uncertainty, you offer us comfort that we are not alone, that we are connected to everyone and everything. This helps us to recalibrate our very being to become what we have been all along, extraordinary beings that are one with source, directing our evolution upwards. So dear Irvin, the Source of Synergy Foundation is honored to bestow upon you, Dr. Irvin Laszlo, the 2020 Synergy Superstar Awards for your exemplary work in supporting us to reconnect to the Source. Hand that over to you. <laughs> if you'd like to say a couple of words. You see, your awards already reached me. Great. It's in my hand. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think words actually fail me. It's such a wonderful event, such wonderful testimonies to Jean, you now to myself, and also to my wife, because we are now celebrating. It just, just so happens. You didn't know it, and we didn't know it when this, when this date was set, that it's going to be on November 16th, which is precisely our 63rd wedding anniversary. So this is another facet of my life. We have spent some wonderful times together, a life together, a whole lifetime practically. We are going on. We have new perspectives to discover and to pursue. But what we have here, what we have had with us, is stays with us. It's a treasure through our family, through our friends, through our partners, through our publications and through the Laszlo Institute. So if you permit me, I will be brief, but I would like to say a few words. What I can contribute briefly to you, the evolution leaders, and to the society in which we live. 
what are those thoughts in the, in, that I came across these so many years that I have been asking myself questions and asking questions about who I am, what the world is. First as a pianist, why am I playing music? What am I doing in this world? Later on as a philosopher and a scientist trying to find the answers, asking questions, questioning and listening, listening to answers as they come. Let me just say briefly those answers, the gist of those answers, because we live in an extremely critical time. Fear at this moment in, in, of, our, of our existence is rampant, it's, it's very high. And pessimism is, is also arising in some quarters. Now that will be a self-defeating way to go. I don't think we need to be pessimistic. I don't think we need to be fearful. Indeed, as, as Roosevelt said, the only thing we need to fear is fear itself. So let me say why I think that these times are unique times in which we can look forward to something that has never been in the hands of any generation. Something which I could, we could call building a new world, building a better world. I'm going to publish in the next few days a little book called How to Build a Better World. A bit of a tongue-in-cheek, but I'm trying to say in very concrete ways, 100 pages, why we can build it and how we can build it. And just is to open a debate on the concrete possibilities. But let me give you the perspective. When I look back from the beginning of my asking questions, what it is that has made was the keynote, the key element of my life. Nothing better comes to my mind than a quote from Einstein. Einstein said, there are just two ways to live your life as if everything is a miracle, or as if nothing is. Well, dear friends, I live my life so far and I intend to continue living it as if everything is a miracle, because everything is. What I have found in all this time is that the world is miraculous because the universe is not a passive sphere of indifferently flowing time and passive space. It's a universe, it's a, it's a field, an evolving field, as something that moves forward, something which encompasses all things, where all things are or can be together and are growing together. A universe which is incredibly coherent. Another thing that Einstein said that that's the most remarkable thing is that the universe is so, co so coherent that we can understand it. Those coherence could not have been the product of pure chance. The universe, 13.8 billion years, this evolutionary period, would not have been long enough to produce these coherent structures that range from the nucleus of atoms to the galaxies and to the matter galaxies and to life on some of the planets, certainly on Earth, but we believe in probably in many other planets as well. This is a remarkable and miraculous universe. There are two elements of this miracle, miracle that particularly stuck in my mind and which I'd like to convey to you. One is that this universe evolves and that it evolves not just smoothly, usually not smoothly, very often it evolves through leaps and bounds, through crisis, sometimes catastrophes, but then through renewal. Complex systems are inherently, and this we know from physics, from thermodynamics, unstable systems. This sounds very, sometimes a small little kick can move it out of a stable state and move it down toward decay and toward the lower levels. Uh, of, of, the, of the evolutionary range, evolutionary scale, down to the molecular level. And that we call it death, the death of the organism, the survival only of those molecules that made up the organism. But this is not the total story. The total story of the evolution of the universe is one of progress. Progress by leaps, 
progress through these continuities. And so one of the two things that I find which are so relevant, that the universe evolves through leaps. Lately, since then I've been looking at it in terms of the science, we can call it a bifurcation. A bifurcation is a sudden change in the trajectory of a system. It doesn't evolve anymore as it used to. It evolves in some new way. And that's the way the system can renew itself. We are the product of multiple trajectories, multiple bifurcations. We have reached a point where we are a human society that possesses consciousness, that is also continuing to evolve, constantly facing new challenges. We are now facing an enormous challenge. And the second thing that I want to say is about this challenge. This challenge is a unique chance. All these bifurcations are chance, a chance and opportunity to move forward. Without them, nothing would significantly, significantly change. Without these, probably we would be on the level of molecules and perhaps individual cells, but this complex organization could not have evolved on Earth and wherever else it evolves in the world without it being motivated by a constant drive towards higher integration, higher unity, higher movement to, to oneness. And this movement is across, across frontiers, across borders. These borders sometimes provide a challenge. The system either evolves further or it decays and disappears, moves to the lower level of organization, disappears as a living system. This is survive, evolve, or, or pass, in, pass the stage of history. This is where we are at. What I want to say is, and want to stay brief, is that this chance that we have, this bifurcation that we have, which we call a global crisis, is a unique opportunity. Think of it in this way. Our world has become inherently unsustainable. That means that a multiple crisis would, would pursue, would follow, if we don't change it fundamentally. Multiple crisis, whether it's the climate change, whether it's the migrant crisis, there's a sea level rise, whether it's the rise of mid city, big city violence, whether it's a rise of, of military and, and, and nuclear, perhaps a nuclear confrontation. We have a rich repertory of possibilities of global crisis. But if we don't change, one of these crises will come about. One of these crises will meet us and it may spell an end of civilization in a way that will be very difficult to reverse. But it need not do so because now we have a chance to change. And the change is through a global crisis, a global crisis that we can master. The greatest news that we have had in our lifetime, I think, came a week or two ago. Not that they found a vaccine, that's a great news, yes. But what they found that we can have a vaccine, we can master this, this challenge. We can make it disappear from the planet, from the human family, from the web of life. That means that the global crisis that we lead can be mastered by us. And therefore, we have here in front of us a unique opportunity. We must master it, but use that mastery not to go back to where we were, not to again enter, re-enter that crisis-prone world, but to change. The chance to change is in crisis. And this crisis gives us the opportunity to change in such a way that other crises, global crises, would not come about. This is a unique godsend. We just have to avoid, obviously, that there are human sacrifices. We have to avoid the toll in human life. 
we have to reduce it as much as possible. And then we have to rise to the challenge and show that the vaccine that we are developing is available to every man, woman, and child on, on, this, on the web of life. It's not a question of making money, but it's at our prestige. Give them a Nobel Prize, but don't make them make, give a contract to who can have the vaccine. Everybody can and must have it so we can overcome this crisis. But use the crisis before it ends. And we hope that it will end, we don't know when, but perhaps in a year, perhaps in six months already, perhaps already in by March, it will be a better situation. But before it ends, if, while we are still in this crisis, use it to change, to change how you think, how you act. Only fundamental change will keep us, bring us forward. Otherwise, we are a threatened species. Thank goodness then such a crisis has come about. A crisis that we can master because this is the opportunity to avoid entering into crisis that we cannot master. How do you master a global climate crisis? How do you master a nuclear confrontation? How do you master the refugees, millions of them? You know, while we have time, and we still have a little time, we must change fundamentally, so that we become a master of our evolution. Last thing, but it's obvious, we can do this, because we have something that no other species on Earth has. I would say consciousness, but it's not true, because everything has consciousness. Every atom, every quantum has consciousness. But we have a level of consciousness that enables us to make a conscious choice, to choose the way we want to go forward. That's the tremendous plus of evolution. evolution. That's in our hands. Use that evolution. Use that consciousness to bring evolution under the, uh, under the auspices, under, in the, within the domain of possible mastery of, of, of our own future, of our own life. A unique chance. I think we should thank our lucky star that this global crisis came about. Let's do away with it. Let's master it as soon as we can. But let's use it so as to change, to change the world around us. A new paradigm, yes, I've been talking about this but I never knew that it's going to have such an incredible possibility of coming about. Because now more and more people, especially young people, realize that the old paradigm, the old way of living doesn't work. It has to change. One very, very last word. I'm sorry if I was a bit long. Very last word. What is it that makes us go forward? It's something in us. It's the same thing that makes the proton and the neutron join together in the, in the nucleus of the hydrogen atom and that attracts electrons into energy shells, that makes molecules, that makes crystals, that makes macromolecules and living cells and organisms and societies of organisms and ecologies and galaxies. It's the integrative force in the universe. This universe is a marvelous universe. It's a miraculous universe. I go back to where I started. I believe that we can live our life as if everything is a miracle, because everything is. And we are the greatest miracle of all. Let's make that miracle work, work so that life goes forward. Life on this planet will flourish and humanity, humanity can rise to the next level of its evolution, to higher consciousness, ultimately to the union, to something higher possibly a cosmic consciousness, possibly something that we call divine, something that we don't know but we can feel, and that is our destiny. That is our mission and that is our purpose. And our chance to achieve it, to move toward it, is now. I thank you for your attention. Let's open our mics and give Irvin Laszlo some appreciation. For showing us a sample of the great depth and scope of the thinking that has made you not only an evolutionary leader, but a synergy superstar.
Congratulations, Irvin. And I'm wondering if um, Carita would like to say a few words. Say a few words. Yes, yes. yes. Um, Carita is very, very reticent, you know, to speak in public, but I think she will say a few words. Yes. You know, I want to introduce Carita by, by, with a very short story, but yeah. um, Diane and I and some other members of this uh, evolutionary leaders group were with Irvin and Carita a few years ago in Mejev, Switzerland, when it was, um, it, it had snowed extensively. And um, we, were, uh, we were outside and we were at the top of a hill. And when we got out of the car, we saw Irvin and Carita look at one another for a moment and join hands and run down the hill covered with snow. <laughs> and I just thought that that spoke volumes to the beautiful partnership that they have had for these 63 years. <laughs> so Carita, please give us a few words. Mm. Yes. Um, I want to say that I'm so happy to <laughs> celebrate Irving today together with you. <clears throat> And, uh, and to celebrate also our wedding universe, anniversary. <clears throat> we have spent 63 years, so almost, almost a lifetime together, a happy lifetime, blessed by two fine sons, and then uh, uh, grandchildren, and now even great-grandchildren. It has been a lifetime of creativity for Irving. All his life he has been looking to build a better world. And to me it's so satisfying to see his efforts recognized. Thank you for this, for this sign of recognition and all my love to the Synergy Foundation and to all of you. Okay. Thank you so much and we all wish you a happy anniversary and many more years together. Thank you. Thank you. Grazie. So we're going to be hearing from both of your sons in just a few moments. But um, first, we would like to hear a few words of tribute from Anne-Marie Forhoeven. She is the founder and director and strategic connector at the Hague Center. She's a core team member of Integral City Meshworks Limited, and she serves as Chief Creative Director for the Club of Budapest, Anne-Marie. Thank you. And um, I'm honored to congratulate you, Irvin, and also, of course, Ju uh, Jean, for this beautiful award. And I would like to speak a few words also from the other members of the club. Um, you invited me to lead the Club of Budapest on a voluntary basis, and I serve the international network since 2017. And I thank you and Carita and the many others for your trust and support. Inspired by your holistic worldview, the 25 independent clubs focus on many sectors in society to be a catalyst for the emergence of the planetary consciousness that you have shared so much about. You emphasize to us always to raise questions again and again and encourage people to find answers themselves. Your amazing stream of, uh, of publications in which you often invite others to contribute and share their voice will continue to be an important source. Storytelling is one of your amazing talents, as you just shared, and which is the same actually with Jean, which so inspired us and inspires us all the time and has been life changing for many, I know. With, for example, your proclamation of Tulum in 2018, you encouraged many of us there together with Alexander and Hugo uh, Francome to bring together communicators, global media players, influentials to develop meaningful and scientifically sound life affirming stories. Different clubs are recognizing business as important leverage point and inspiring sessions with uh, Chris, your son, and others at the Laszlo Institute in China, at Humanity Rising, in the Evolutionary Leaders, to name a few, are calling forth business leaders 
to reinvent organizations into businesses with a systemic approach and a clear role in society, contributing to the transformation so needed and with the potential that you just spoke of. Your call to stop centralizing around nation states and acknowledging the role of cities and eco-regions encourages ambitious programs to continue, um, those I also con uh, contribute to. It is special focus in the Club of Budapest Denmark and in the Netherlands with City Transformers and with the Youth Assembly at Peace Weekend last September where you asked youngsters of a hundred cities around the world to stand in their power and bring forth their dreams and hopes. And it was so touching to see the impact <laughs> that that had. You invited them, as you invite us again and again, to trust in our own strength and focus on exploring our essence, share with others what we discover, learn together and experiment with the goal to bring our world into balance, coherence with ourselves and in the other, including all life forms, thus creating a unique situation in super coherence in which love and beauty can flow through our life in never ending streams. It is this that you and Carita call for and inspire me and many others. As we saw recently also, in the source of wonders and the, with the Fuji declara declaration and to allow our divine spark of life and that life is a miracle. I thank you so much and for your and Carita's contribution to co-create from the heart a world that is rooted in planetary consciousness and in synteny, super coherence, in universal love. And we wish you good health and great happiness. And may we enjoy both of your presence and celebrate in gratitude. Thank you. Beautiful, Anne Maria. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to hear next from David Wolfson. He is a member of the Source of Synergy Foundation board and a founder of the Club of Budapest Canada as well as being a longtime associate of Dr. Laszlo. David. Oh, hello, hello. Thank you so much, uh, Diane. And uh, Irvin and Carita, so good to see you both. And uh, happy anniversary, Irvin. It's been a few years since I uh, saw you. Actually, it was at the event in Chicago with, uh, with Emmanuel a few years ago. And I just wanted to congratulate, add my congratulations uh, uh, for this award, this wonderful award. I have to say that um, starting with your book that I read in 1994, The Choice, Evolution or Extinction, um, your work, your thoughts, um, your theories have had a huge impact and uh, inspiration in my life. And of course, uh, we worked together for many years in different projects, starting with the first World Day of Planetary Consciousness in 2001, and then world shift and other initiatives. And um, I think that you've inspired a great many people with both your work for humanity's future and your scientific work uh, with theories on the Akashic field and the quantum field realm, which really are the scientific, in my view, the scientific explanation for what we're calling source <laughs> in, in, in the universe. Um, that intelligence, uh, level of intelligence that you've dedicated so much of your life and your work for. So, Irvin, uh, from my office in Toronto and uh, wishing you the best and looking forward to reconnecting again soon and uh, perhaps uh, working on some other initiatives uh, with everyone in the future and uh, wishing you the best and sending love from Toronto and Canada, Irvin and Karita, and happy anniversary again. Thank you. Thank you, David. And now we're going, to, we're going to hear from Irvin and Carita's wonderful sons. So let's start with a tribute from Chris Laszlo. He is a quantum leader and professor of organizational behavior at Case Western Reserve University and the author of seven books on sustainability and world flourishing. So let's hear from Chris Laszlo. Hi, I'm Chris Laszlo. 
I'm thrilled to be with you today in congratulating Irvin on being a 2020 Synergy Superstar Award recipient. His life work is so aligned with the purpose of the Source of Synergy Foundation, which is to synergize individuals, organizations, and efforts by tapping to the infinite source of collective consciousness, creativity, and potential for the common good. My father once described his creative writing process as a kind of downloading from the source, which he's alternatively described as the Akashic field, the zero-point energy field, cosmic consciousness, and more simply, the source. His life work has helped articulate a radically different science-based view or new paradigm of what it means to be human in the nature of reality. The importance of his work lies in the comprehensive picture it gives us of where we are today and where we could be heading tomorrow in ways that are humanly and ecologically sound. An example of the practical applications of Irvin's work can be found in the changing role of business in society. That's what I want to speak to you a little bit about. To many people, it's clear that in the business world, the existing view of reality that we are separate, selfish, utility-maximizing individuals whose essential natures are just competitive and driven by greed, no longer serves us well. Urban has done a great service to the business world by helping to articulate a new view based on connecting this care and compassion. He's one of the original deep thinkers who has helped to usher in a new paradigm that implies a form of economic organizing in service of life rather than only shareholder profit. The new generation of business leaders is building consciously or unconsciously on this new paradigm to operationalize Urban's vision. At Case Western Reserve University, I teach, a business student, I teach business students a quantum leadership course designed to develop their leadership skills through practices that help them experience wholeness and connectedness. Practices such as mindfulness meditation, breathing exercises, body scans for somatic awareness, nature immersion, music, and journaling are essential for personal renewal and resilience. They help connect the person to their self, others, and nature, increasing awareness of how their actions impact the world around them. Layered on top of the practices are insights derived in part from Urban's work that offer a radically different view of what it means to live and lead in today's workplace. This kind of course changes who students are being, not only what they're doing. I shared this vignette to give you a sense of the practical implications of Urban's work. It's just one of the many domains in which humanity is being called to reinvent itself as an agent of world benefit. Congratulations again on the award, Irvin, and best wishes to each of you who are engaged with the Source of Synergy Foundation and other initiatives at doing well by doing good. Thank you from Chris Laszlo. And now we have Alexander Laszlo. Alexander is president of the Bertolanfi Center for the Study of Systems Science and Director of Research at the Laszlo Institute of New Paradigm Research. He's currently residing in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Alexander. Thank you so much. Uh, what a joy it is to share in this important celebration and that we can all celebrate uh, these two wonderful individuals. And I would like to salute Jean Houston as well and uh, with uh, her permission, dedicate this uh, my, few, my next words to Irvin and also Carita, because there is no doubt in my mind that uh, the, the, the superstar that Irvin is, is accompanied by another great, great star, that is Carita. Uh, the two of them really make this system work. Um, I think I can borrow the expression from Lynn McTaggart that she said at the beginning that uh, Irvin has had a seminal influence on my life. Uh, we can kind of take that fairly literally. Um, <clears throat> but I also want to uh, share a few vignettes, as uh, Chris did as well. Uh, over 25 years ago, just a couple of years after I had finished my doctoral studies, we were on Paradise Island in the Bahamas for a UNESCO meeting of authors of the Encyclopedia of Life Support Systems, for which he and I co-authored an entry. I asked him, why he did the things he did, what motivated him. He said he just wanted to know what the universe is, how it works, what life is. Fundamentally, he said, he wanted to know if there is any deeper meaning to the universe. And all he did was in service of answering these questions, much as he said also in uh, the brief video we heard from him. In this sense, he confided, he confided that it was a very selfish engagement. He just wanted to know. And yet, 
it was always clear to me that he didn't just want to know in the sense of hoarding the knowledge and insights gleaned from his incessant inquiry. His prolific writing, lecturing, and conversing to reach as many people as possible are testimony to his interest in helping others come to their own understanding too. To me, he always appears to be opening portals from one worldview to the next, showing up as a guide who stands at the doorway, pointing out new vistas of pattern and process, and shining a beacon to new horizons of reality. He has the ability to paint the biggest picture on the broadest canvas without either blurring the lines or reducing the resolution of the image or reality so much that the individual would be lost. To the contrary, the portraits of cosmos and consciousness that he draws, that he draws up help people find themselves in the larger narrative of being and becoming. And yet, in articulating his vision, he doesn't easily inhabit these new worlds and landscapes. He is neither shaman nor mystic, even though there are many who would resonate with the power of his insight. In this sense, Irvin could be thought of as an intuitive or natural scientist with vision beyond the visible frontiers of everyday science. He has a way of listening into the pattern language of the universe itself and coaxing out of her the message and meaning that she wishes to share. I, I've shared this little analogy before, but let me share it with you now, the, the idea that you've, you've heard of the, the notion of the horse whisperer, yes? The one who can communicate with horses and access the domain of equine intelligence. Well, I like to think of Irvin as the universe whisperer, speaking the language that we all know and recognize when he interprets it, translates it, and expresses it in terms that are easy for us to celebrate and understand. So here we are celebrating this wonderful communicator and this wonderful visionary who sees beyond the worlds that we currently uh, reside in. My love to Irvin, my love to Carita, and my love to all of you. Beautiful, Alexander, thank you so much for joining us today. So we're going to have next a very special message from Japan. After that, we will have uh, three, three more tributes uh, to Dr. Laszlo before we close today's program. So uh, next, we're going to hear from Hiro and Masami Sayanji. They are the president and chairpersons of the Goy Peace Foundation. They issued together with Dr. Laszlo the Fuji Declaration on the Divine Spark of Humanity. And Mr. Sayanji is also a co-initiator with Dr. Laszlo of the Conscious Business Declaration. So let's hear the message from Japan. <laughs> Hello, Arvin. Congratulations on receiving Synergy Superstar Award. You are really a superstar, mm. enlightening humanity. We are especially happy because you are the second laureate of the Goy Peace Award. Mm -hmm. And since you received the award in year 2000, it was already 20 years ago, we became a very good friend and partner. And our partnership and friendship has been strengthening. And we are collaborating so many uh, wonderful projects so that uh, we are, we are very happy that you received and uh, uh, congratulations again. We are looking forward collaborating further uh, to uh, enlightening uh, people and uh, making breakthrough of humanity. Thank you. Congratulations, Arvin for receiving this award. You have dedicated your entire life to humanity. Through your own words and actions, through your books, speeches, and lectures, you have given us great guidance, including myself. I would like to express my deepest respect and gratitude 
for everything you have done for us. This is not the end, but only a beginning of your greater mission. Let us continue to work together for my years to come. Thank you, Dr. Lazaro. Congratulations again. Urban, you are truly loved around the world. And we have a brief message uh, from um, another colleague in Argentina, Hugo Francon, who is the founder of NetSpirit, a global initiative born in Argentina for oneness in motion based on the co-creation of the tractors in order to reconcile planetary decision makers with spirituality by drawing on the rational la language of the sciences. I give you Hugo Francon. I met Erwin Laszlo in person on his trip to Buenos Aires at the end of 2017 within the framework of the so-called Spirit Week, a week in which various events were organized where Erwin spoke about the convergence of science and spirituality. I immediately realized that everything he had expressed had great relevance for humanity, since whether we like it or not, the language of science has been the leading voice in the world for 300 years. I believe that over the years, Ermin Laszlo's stature will be as important as Newton or Einstein, when it is proved that his theories of the universe are true, implying a huge transformation in the way of seeing and understanding the nature of reality. I celebrate this award as a great recognition of Erwin Laszlo's huge contribution to the evolution of consciousness. Thank you very much. We thank you, Hugo. So we have with us Dr. Georgie Sabo, who serves as the executive director at the Laszlo Institute of New Paradigm Research. And she is also the Dean of Graduate Studies at Ubiquity University. So please, Dr. Zepo. Oh, thank you so much, Deborah and Diane. What a great event to celebrate. Two amazing people. Uh, now, a little forward. Uh, big love to you both, Corita and Irvin, on your wedding anniversary. There is a saying that uh, behind every great man there is a great woman. Well, I would really change one word. It's not behind, it is besides, brother. Um, now, please allow me to read uh, uh, something to you. Irvin Laszlo's coherent scientific worldview describes a universe in which an all-encompassing energy sea connects all phenomena. This underlying energy plenum acts as an infinite memory field, retaining and transferring the information of prior universes and everything that has ever happened, including all traces of human mental and physical activity. Irvin Laszlo postulates that in this dense energy field, matter and mind co-evolve and living organisms are not accidental products. His view of the cosmos describes a subtle interconnectedness with all things visible and invisible in the universe. Understanding this can help overcome human beings' sense of alienation from one another, from our planet and from the cosmos, which, in Laszlo's view, is the root of many of our problems. This is in the 300 pages of the Laszlo Chronicle of Irving's work and philosophy summarized. Dear Irving, mentor, colleague, and a friend to me for over a decade, thank you so much for influencing and inspiring my life ad infinitum. I know you have influenced and inspired hundreds of thousands of people's lives across the planet. Please keep on doing what you're doing best, sharing your knowledge and wisdom with everybody. And we are there to support you as always. And I'd like to 
agree with Jude Corriven's word that you and Jean are not superstars, you are super constellations. So thank you so much for shining your lights upon us and congratulations on this prestigious award. Thank you so much for being here to, with us today. So we have uh, saved for our last tribute today to Dr. Laszlo, uh, another one of our visionary evolutionary leaders, Steve Farrell. He is the co-founder and worldwide executive director of Humanities Team and co-initiator of the Conscious Business Declaration with Irvin Laszlo, Hiro Sayanji, Chris Laszlo, and John Thomas, Steve Farrell. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah and Diane. And I want to share, this is such a, uh, uh, such a great thing that you're bringing us all together for this award ceremony. Dr. Jean Houston and Dr. Irvin Laszlo are so incredibly worthy and they have uh, not only been visionaries, guides, mentors to me, but I, I believe uh, millions of people all over the world. They've helped to shift this collective humanity, this whole journey, conscious evolution journey in, in a whole new direction on the strength of their inspiration, their leadership, their integrity. Uh, let me say a few words about um, Irvin, actually, before I do, I want to also uh, congratulate you, uh, Carita and, and Irvin, 63 years, wow. And, uh, you know, they say there are no coincidences, so this was not a random thing that on this day, this award is, is given to Irvin that we're celebrating your anniversary, so huge congratulations to both of you. Now, Irvin, the, the speech that you gave here, the, your acceptance speech, was so... Uh, Urban Laszlo, because I, I see you as this tractor beam of truth, of wisdom, of clarity, uh, and whether we're on Zoom or you're in a, or in, a, in a physical audience, you can't miss uh, the, the truth of what you're sharing. And you never duck uh, the truth and try and spin a story that uh, we have some easy way out or there's no existential crisis or something. You also don't duck uh, words, is, even today, there are uh, some that go cross-eyed, and certainly decades ago when you began your work into this research of mind and spirit, as you talked about oneness, and as you talked about the divine, and, and conscious living, and conscious business, and you bring these things out, and of course you've written over 90 books, and all of these articles, and research papers, and so on. And you've uh, been involved in founding these NGOs, the Club of Rome, Club of Budapest. Uh, it, it, uh, it's extending just enormous influence. It's, it's creating positive change. And I have no doubt but that our creator, uh, that you were one of the ones when, when, uh, uh, when the divine was deciding how this whole evolution was going to unfold, how we were going to find this new humanity, this new earth. That, uh, that you answered that call and you embodied to be here now and to leave all of the genius that you have of music and all of these other academic geniuses to do this work and to, to shift this path. And so you're, uh, you're so incredibly deserving of this award. And uh, how neat is that, that Chris and uh, Alexander are here too, who of course are your uh, progeny that are uh, extending the work even further all over the world. So it's huge congratulations to you. Thank you so much, Steve. So before I turn it over to Diane Williams to close our event today, I want to thank everybody for your for your heartfelt tributes to Jean and Irvin. And I want to remind everybody who's watching that uh, Jean and Irvin and Diane, plus so many of the people who gave tributes today are all contributors to this new book, Our Moment of Choice. So you can find out more about the book at ourmomentofchoice.com and see some of the latest wisdom coming out of these 43 evolutionary leaders who contributed to the book. So thank you. And I give you for our final closing words, 
Diane Williams. Thank you, Deborah. <clears throat> and thank you everyone for being with us today to honor these two extraordinary souls, Dr. Urban Laszlo and Dr. Jean Houston. And we wish to express our deep gratitude to everyone that contributed today's program and everyone out there tuning in. Know that your source space synergistic thoughts, actions, intentions truly matter as they register in the field that affects us all. And all of you contributing to positive transformation in your relationships through your work and the love you radiate into the world are synergy superstars or better yet synergy constellation. So thank you all for your service to the evolution. Now we're, we're going to hear one last piece of music, the acorn stump by the bee eaters. And I think at this time we can also all open our mics for a final okay. word of congratulations to Jean Yay. and her <laughs> <laughs> yes. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations.